have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, good morning all. If you'd like to give each other a wave, good morning. It's interesting, the, the message of the readings today is on discipleship. And the bottom line of it is essentially Discipleship comes at a cost. So for a few moments, let's reflect on our own discipleship and the way in which we celebrate our baptismal priesthood and ask the Lord again to help us in our response. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear friends, wonderful to see you here today. Um, If you look at the front of the altar, you'll see that it is surrounded by wreaths of flowers, very appropriate. They are coming from Tina Lang's uh, mass yesterday. So again, we uh, call her to mind. And you know, today we hear very much about what does it mean and what it does mean to be a disciple of Jesus. And it's very interesting. In today's readings, we hear Jeremiah railing against his love with God and the price, the painful price, he has had to pay for it. It's quite quite, quite a response. And these sentiments are, to a certain extent, expressed within the gospel in the dialogue between Jesus and Peter. I guess, you know, the bottom line here is discipleship does involve 
a personal, painful cost. So discipleship does often involve a personal, painful cost. Father Kavanagh, again, a great Jesuit, says, and he expresses this very poignantly in the words, following Christ costs the follower. What must be paid is a willingness to let go of our hunger for security, approval, and comfort, to take up our own cross of love and give ourselves away, to abandon our image of success and schemes of self-indulgence. The lure of holiness, as Jeremiah found out to his discomfort, provides no warm blanket. Love's love is no crutch, as some critics of religion have imagined. No, it is a harrowing experience, something like a death. Only radical insecurity remains when we entrust all to God, especially our disappointments and failure. And you know, Teresa of Avila, the great Carmelite mystic and doctor of the church, expressed her struggle with God in those famous words, uh, Lord, if this is the way you treat your friends, uh, no wonder you have so few. And again, her soulmate, uh, John of the Cross, saw within the soul's darkness struggle, pain, and confusion. Again, God's presence and embrace. He says, in the dark night of the soul, bright flows the river of God. That's very, very beautiful. Listen to it again. In the dark night of the soul, bright flows the river of God. So essentially, even when we are within that darkness, within that struggle, within that desperation, within that anguish and frustration and that feeling of abandonment, that bright river of God flows, just as Jeremiah was trying to express. And you know, you've often heard me say in that, when speaking about that divine romance between the soul and God, this romance can unfold within our lives of discipleship. It can be the motivating and driving force which empowers us to be followers of Jesus, who have fallen in love with God and enabled and empowered us to celebrate our baptismal priesthood in the multiple forms of ministries within our faith community. Uh, our, our faith communities, as we've seen so often, especially in these recent days. And to a large extent, it is the cri de coeur, the cry of the heart, which enables us to let go of personal ambition, personal gain, social status, and the desire for power. Because, you know, this is the cry of the heart, that cri de coeur, which unifies, fuses us as one in the heartbeat of God. This is essentially what that discipleship, that cri de coeur, is all about. And, you know, when you think about it, <laughs> in our own woundedness, our brokenness, our human frailties, our short shortcomings and our weaknesses, in the sometimes pitch blackness, confusion and insecurity of where we are going and what we are doing, in the sometimes frightening absence of any spiritual feeling of satisfaction or what is used to be referred to as spiritual consolation, or the gnawing, that gnawing, crucifying feeling that God has abandoned us, our passionate love and our lives of discipleship continue 
to rotate around God just as a planet rotates around the sun. And that's the, that's the gravitational pull of God's love as we know he is ever present within our lives, whatever we're going through and whatever we are experiencing. You know, this whole feeling expressed both in Jeremiah and also in Peter and in that gospel, I think summed up very, very wonderfully in the words of Thomas Merton in his Thoughts on Solitude. Because he looks at this again, the way in which he captures that vortex of our own aspirations, of our quests, of our fears, of our love and our confusion as an integral part of the disciples' journey. And this is what it is. It's an integral part of being a follower of Jesus. Listen to these words. You know, they're very, very special. You ready? Yes? Good. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have the desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. And I think Merton sums up the journey of all discipleship, and as each and every one of us try to mirror in our world that incredible, awesome love which God has for each and every one of us, this, too, is the price we often have to pay for being a follower of Jesus and engaging in that divine romance between our own soul and God. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves, and again, remember that discipleship, that especially in these wonderful but challenging times that the Lord is with us as we try to celebrate that baptismal priesthood and minister to him uh, in his name. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day and a wonderful weekend. God bless you all.